Now we're going to discuss how to find the pr joint probability of having two events uh, or in other words having two events happen at the same time. Uh, so that's both event X and event Y are occurring simultaneously. Okay, so let's say that uh, we have a system that can exhibit two different types of events. Okay, so suppose that a system can exhibit two different types of events. And there's basically a event R and event S. Now we have alpha possible events of type R. That means R can take values from 1 to 3 all the way up to alpha. So alpha possible events of type R and beta a possible events of type S. So S can take values from 1 to 3 all the way up to beta. Then the question is uh, what is the probability of joint occurrence both of both event R and event S? So I call this PRS is the probability of joint occurrence of both event R and S. So both event R and event S. Now, if these two events are statistically independent or uncorrelated, so the occurrence of one event uh, that is to say, the occurrence of one event does not affect the occurrence of the other event. Uh, then we can uh, make some arguments about this joint probability. So if events of type R and type S are statistically independent in other, in other words uncorrelated then uh, we can say the following uh, so when we form an ensemble of the system that can exhibit two different type of events uh, we're going to have uh, NR a number of systems that exhibit event R and then we will have a fraction of these systems also exhibiting event S then probability of uh, having a event S, so a PS a fraction, remember that means a relative frequency of these events, uh, so the out of an R systems a fraction of these, uh, so multiplied by relative frequency PS, uh, of these systems will also exhibit also exhibit 
event S. So the number of systems exhibiting jointly both R and S, so an RS number of systems exhibiting both R and S is going to be the number of systems that exhibit event type R multiplied by the probability of event type S. So uh, then the probability of or the joint probability, probability of occurrence of both event R and event S, joint occurrence, will be uh, the number of systems that exhibit uh, both event R and event S divided by total number of systems which is equal to uh, the number of systems that exhibit event R multiplied by probability of S so that there will be a sub a set of these systems that will be exhibiting both divided by n and since n r divided by n is probability of r it will be probability of event r multiplied by probability of event s okay so we can say that if the events r and s are statistically independent the joint probability of both event R and event S occurring is the multiplication of the two probabilities PR and uh, PS. Okay, so uh, I'm going to give an example here. So let me note my result here again. So if uh, the events R and uh, type R and type S are statistically independent, then we have probability of joint occurrence of both R and S equals to probability of R multiplied by probability of S. So that's an important results okay so let's look at an example uh, tossing uh, two dice so as you know uh, if you toss one die you can have six possible outcomes uh, you can have one two three four five six and if you toss another die uh, for the second die you will also have six possible outcomes one two three four five six so i call this uh, die one uh, system a, a1 and die two a2 so um, the combination of these two is my uh, total system a star let's say so uh, a1 can have six possible outcomes so six possible uh, events and what are those? So R can take values of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the probability of having an event of type R is 1 over 6. For die 2, I have also uh, 6 possible uh, events. It's going to have S. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and probability of an event of type S occurring is again 1 over 6. Okay, so I'm going to look at uh, the joint occurrence of an event type R and event type S. Uh, what is the total number of uh, possible outcomes? Total number of possible outcomes this is what I would like to find out well uh, let's start filling this table uh, and we will see how it goes so 
if die we toss two two dice at the same time uh, die one gives me a reading one die two gives me a reading one and then i do it second time this gives me a reading one this gives me a reading two third time one and three one and four one and five one and six then i will continue two and one two and two etc so this will continue like this now you can see that for each outcome of type r in uh, system a1 i have uh, six possibilities uh, that is basically appearing here so here i have uh, a grouping of six so six possibilities uh, for each event of type r so what is the total number of possible outcomes in this experiment it's going to be six times six 36 possible outcomes so uh, now i need to have this condition our events of type r and s are statistically independent so i can say that if the two dice do not interact uh, how could they interact for example uh, they could be magnetic and then there would be uh, magnetic forces uh, between the sides of the two dice so if one is uh, if die one gives me one for example because of magnetic uh, interactions with die 2 die 2 has to be 3 either 3 or 6 for example something like this so it can change the result of the uh, uh, the it can change the events that's going to happen in die 2 so we, we will have a not magnetic for example or non-magnetic so that we have no interaction between the two then they are events of type r and events of type s are statistically independent okay then the probability of occurrence of event of type r and event of type s at the same time is going to be the product of the probabilities so it is 1 over 6 times 1 over 6 1 over 36 for example i want the first die to give me a 1 the second die to give me a 1 so this is going to be 1 over 36 okay so why is that because i have 36 possible outcomes of this experiment and 1 1 is just one of them so that's the relative frequency of occurrence of 1 1 which is 1 over 36. Uh, let's look at one more example tossing two coins um, again uh, assume that the two coins coin coins coin one and coin two do not interact then i can say the probability of joint occurrence of events of type r and s are the pro uh, is the product of pr and ps so what are the possible outcomes uh, of um, type r here type r is uh, head or tail so I have two possible outcomes, uh, head or tail, and for this one, I can also have head or tail. And so I have alpha is equal to uh, two, beta is equal to two here, so two types of events. So let me list all the possible uh, outcomes. I can have coin one is head, 
head then I can have a head in coin 2 a tail in coin 2 then I can have a tail tail then I can have a head for coin 2 and a tail for coin 2 so there is a total of a uh, total number of outcomes is going to be equal to 2 times 2 it's 4 so what is the probability of getting a head and head well probability of having an event of type R for one coin is 1 over 2 uh, for the other coin is also 1 over 2 and so I want head on the first one 1 over 2 multiplied by 1 over 2 1 over 4 so indeed when I look at uh, these uh, events I can see the probability assignments here this is going to have a probability of 1 over 4 this is 1 over 4 this is 1 over 4 and this is 1 over 4 probability of getting a tail and tail so basically uh, when these outcomes are statistically independent you just multiply their probabilities in order to find the joint probability of occurrence of both event type R and event S. So we have demonstrated with coins, we have demonstrated with the experiment of tossing two dice, two dice or two coins. And uh, basically the way we see this is you, you need to have a subset of the uh, systems in the ensemble so you have n systems in the ensemble and r of those systems exhibit event r and when you multiply it by the probability of having event type s you find the uh, sub uh, systems the number of subsystems in n r that exhibit both of those events so that allows us to reach this conclusion the joint occurrence of both event type r and event type s is the product of the uh, individual probabilities.